Another day, another new AI model has been stealth released. This one is called Sonic, and it's free to use for the next few hours on RuCode, Klein, Cursor, and OpenCode. So go try it out before it's too late. There isn't much info about it right now, and people are saying this could be the Grok 4 coding model. But is it as good as Claude Sonic 4? Let's try it out. And before we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Sonic has a 200K context window, so not as good as Claude Sonnet and GPT-5. It's a reasoning model and not a multimodal one, so it won't understand your screenshots, but it's designed for code. So let's give it some coding tasks using open code. Okay, so we have a fresh instance of open code version 5.8. I'm gonna change the model with a slash command to Sonic, and let's use Sonic to make a 3D game. So I'm gonna give it a prompt to say, Create a 3D game using 3JS and React, make it playable with a character that runs really fast and collects coins. Ask any questions if you have any. We'll let it cook and it's got a checklist, so it hasn't asked me any questions. And the first issue is that it's using create react app. So we're gonna interrupt it, remove the codes you currently have and create a new project without using create react app. Okay, and now it's using Vite, which is much better. It's installing 3JS and 3 React Fiber. And now it's gone ahead to create the rest of the app. Okay, and now it's finished the game. The whole process felt like it took a bit over five minutes, but anyway, it says the development server is already running at localhost 5173, so let's try it out. And okay, so this is something we can move with WASD, arrow keys, and press shift to boost. So let's try it. And it looks like it's going through the walls. Um, what, what, whoa, okay, so I'm in space, and how do I collect the coins? Okay, so the coins are currently not collectible, but the boost mechanic is kind of cool. I can press shift to boost and the character goes green. And that's, yeah, it's, it's something. Let's see if we can actually put the floor on the ground and make the coins collectible. Later. Okay, so it hasn't fixed the ground being on the floor, but now the coins are collectible. And I honestly really like the boost mechanic. It's interesting that it made the character blue. I wonder why it did that. Okay, next we're gonna try the classic ball in rotating hexagon prompt and we'll see how it does. And look at that. It was able to do it perfectly in one shot. The ball is not clipping out of the hexagon, which I've seen some models do. And we have some options. So I can stop the rotation and the ball kind of rolls into position, which is quite nice. I can reset the ball so it bounces a bit. And let's start the rotation and the ball still works. And the code for it looks pretty solid too. I mean, okay, we have this let over here, which is only used once, so it should really be a const. But aside from that, I really like the structure of the code, the way it's done, the maths, the functions and the comments it's given it. And I think if I were to write it by hand, I'd do it in a very similar way. It's even using modern web APIs like request animation frame. Finally, I'm gonna give it this task that I give to all the models I test, which is to use this bun react v template to create an app that allows me to drag MP3 files into it and it will create a transcript using OpenAI's Whisper model. The key here is to see where it's gonna put this API key. Good models like Claude Sonnet 4 will create an express backend and put it in there and other not so good models will expose this API key on the front end. So I'm gonna ask it to run the prompt MD file and see how it does. And it looks like it's done the right thing and asked me if I want this to be an entirely client-side app or if I want a simple backend. This is perfect. Guys, I didn't prep this beforehand. I didn't know it was gonna ask me. It just did the right thing. So I've answered the questions saying it should have a simple backend, which is better for security. I have no design requirements, but it should look visually impressive. And I want support for multiple uploads. Let's see how it does with these answers and it's finished creating the project. I've got to say, I'm really impressed with this model's speed. We're going to run the project with this command, which uses concurrently to run the client and the server together. Nice. And it looks like we have our first problem to do with Tailwind being installed incorrectly. I'll give it the error to fix, and this is the site after it's fixed it. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it had trouble using Tailwind, Maybe it would have done a better job creating a visually appealing site if it used it properly. But anyway, let's just go with it. I'm going to click on here to add an MP3 file. I'll pick that one and it does some automatic transcribing. So it will wait for that to complete. And it's done it all correctly with readable text. Looking at the code, we have a separate server file that uses bun to serve, which is perfect. I would have done the same thing. It's put the API key in the server, so it's not exposing it on the front end. 
which is exactly what I wanted. Overall, I'm impressed with this model's coding capabilities. It's good, although I'm not impressed at its design skills. Maybe it's my bad prompting. Anyway, without much information about it, I mean, there aren't any benchmarks to compare it to GPT-5 or other models, I'd have to go with my gut feel. And I'd say after using it for a few hours, it's not better than Sonnet. However, if it comes out as cheap as GPT-5 or even cheaper, then this may just be my go-to model for easy to medium level coding tasks. But what do you think? Have you tried it? Will you try it? Let me know in the comments. Again, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy coding.